Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last lecture of EC 3400 Analog Electronics, we looked at a theorem involving networks of resistors and a single capacitor that was particularly convenient for finding the impedance of that network. Here we're going to look at a similar theorem that involves voltage dividers. I've previously used this theorem in my guitar amplification and effects class in order to analyze standard passive tone controls on electric guitars and also examine the effect of adding something called a treble bleed capacitor to the volume control on an electric guitar. So here's the setup of the theorem. We're analyzing a voltage divider and we have a resistor in one branch and some network consisting of resistors, however many you want, but at most one capacitor in the other branch. And you could have this flipped around so you could have the network containing the capacitor up here and just a single resistor down here. It doesn't really matter. Now, when proving this theorem, you need to consider each of these cases separately, but you can prove each case using the RC impedance theorem I talked about in the previous lecture. I'm not going to bother to prove it here. You can look up the proof in Marshall Leach's notes on the topic. I'll leave a reference to it in the comments below. Anyway, the idea is we can write down the transfer function for this voltage divider as finding the transfer function at DC times this ratio here, where the ratio has two time constants. The time constant on top is computed with V2 set to zero volts and the V1 side left dangling. And the time constant on the bottom is computed with V1 set to zero volts and with the V2 side left dangling. And the way I remember that two goes on top and one goes on bottom is I think about card games and I think about the game blackjack and that involves the number 21. So I think about the number 21 starting with the two on top. I realize that memory aid may only work for me. So let's do an example. If I didn't have this resistor here, this would be a one pole high pass filter. So you should be able to guess that our Bode plot is going to have a high shelf kind of form. So putting that resistor back in, if we then open the capacitor to compute the value of the voltage divider at DC, well at DC we open this up and I just have R2 over R1 plus R2 according to our standard voltage divider rules. All right, so now for the time constant in the numerator, that's the time constant of this zero, if we're talking about poles and zeros, then we want to take V2 here and essentially short it to ground. So R2 gets effectively eliminated. So when we clip the capacitor out with our imaginary wire clippers and replace the capacitor with some sort of ohmmeter that's measuring resistance, the only resistor it's going to see is R1. Remember when we're computing tau2, the V1 side is left dangling. So we just have R1 times C. I need to be careful to not forget to multiply that resistance by the capacitance. All right, so for the time constant associated with the pole, we'll take V1 here and ground it. And V2 is left dangling, but I still have the R2 connected to ground here. So essentially... I have a connection here, so basically I am now seeing R1 in parallel with R2 as I look out from the capacitor. So I write R1 in parallel with R2, and again I have to remember to multiply by C. Let's explore what happens to our transfer function for the voltage divider if we plug in J omega for S and let omega go to infinity. Well, these one terms are going to become insignificant as omega is going to infinity. And basically this whole factor here is going to turn into R1 over R1 in parallel with R2 because the C's are going to cancel. Well, let me think about what R1 in parallel with R2 is. Well, it looks like R2 times R1 over R1 plus R2. So this actually is a parallel combination R1 in parallel with R2. So these wind up canceling and I wind up with one. And I actually didn't really need to do all of this work because you can look at the circuit and right away say that for high frequencies, the capacitor will look like a short, R1 is getting shorted out, and the output is getting shorted directly to the input. 
But this kind of analysis is a good sanity check on our more complicated general formula. So our Bode plot is going to have this high shelf characteristic going from the raw voltage divider at DC, going up to one, letting all of the signal through. And the lower breakpoint is going to be one over the time constant associated with the zero. And the upper breakpoint is one over the time constant associated with the pole. And the number over here is associated with this breakpoint. I had to scoosh it over a little bit because otherwise the text wound up overlapping. 